Okay. Um, hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah, energy. Thanks, everyone, for coming, especially to being the last day. And most of the people that we knew are going home. So um, we are very glad for us uh, to have you here. Thanks the La Villa Hacker people that are here, I'm sure, because I cried for that. Yeah. And, um, well, we are prepared now to show, talk to you about uh, railroad hacking. We call this... It's working? Not working? Okay. <laughs> We are Gabriela Garcia and David Melendez. I am a security software developer that got into hacking and hardware hacking because of the hardware hacker people that they like to introduce you to the where we are war. And David Melendez, I am the embedded software engineer that is here to uh, talk to you with me about railroad hacking. We call this the dark territory because in railway sector, a dark territory is a section of the railway that lacks remotely control of uh, signals and uh, you have no automatic blocking systems. So in this area, the communication and coordination is uh, really exclusive on the railway operator and the term has gained popularity in uh, railway hackers to describe sectors that lack supervision in any other kind of way. So, we are introducing you, Fun with Trains. As you can see, graphic design is our passion. So, let me introduce you to some concepts. For example, the railway block. A railway block is a section that is normally no more than uh, one train can be present to um, evade collision between two trains. Uh, this block se session sorry, uh, can be between stations and can be between signals for the railroad, railroad control people to be able to control the passes of the um, trains between these blocks. To know where and how uh, they have been passing the trains, we have axle counters that are systems that count the axis of uh, every train and every train uh, needs to be the same amount of axles in the first one and in the last one. It's nice because you don't lose, lose people or have all your train, so it's very cool. And we can have train blockings in different ways. For example, we can give a token. It's vintage, but it's still happening in some parts of the world. You can give the railway operator a um, token, and he takes it. It's vintage, OK? It takes it, and then uh, you know that this train has passed through your station. The next Technological advancement has been to call people instead of giving them a token because it's weird. So um, the telephone block is just to tell the next block that the train is passing for, through your block. It's, it's less vintage, but vintage too. And then we pass it to the train blocking, the electronic train blocking. What we have is a slices of railway that are controlled by signals or controlled by a central control operation center that um, blocks the slice of railway when the train is passing out, taking into account the data received through the access counter. We have it in one uh, truck, we have two trucks, and we have reversible two trucks. So we can have uh, control in every direction you have your, your train passing. The control is just set by the side where these beacons in the railway are set. So if you are in, your, in one di direction, the beacon that is controlling you is in the right side of the, of the railway. And if you are in the opposite dire direction, in your direction there will be another beacon controlling that you are passing through this segment. And this is the central light traffic control. This is especially in Madrid called Chamartín. And there are like lots of people working here. 
uh, controlling that the trains don't collide, especially. We have based this investigation in one of the systems that is present in Spain, that is called ASFA. Is in Spanish is Anuncio de Señales y Frenado Automático. In English, Announcement of Signal and Automatic Braking. What it does is um, support the train circulation based on a core capacitor circuit connected to a signal. And depending the signal, uh, the aspect they need to transmit, transmit one frequency or another in the onboard equip equipment. So this is the whole process. You have a railway signal uh, that connects to a unit that ha gives a signal to a beacon. The beacon is received by the, the perturbation, is the name? It's the perturbation is received by the antenna and this antenna gives a signal to a console that is inside the train and gives different aspects related to different signs. The same, uh, the first of all is that you can have fixed as aspects that are signals or beacons that only transmit one signal and vari variable aspects that have beacons that have different signals. And it depends on the frequency they leave the, the antenna is the aspect that the railway operator is receiving inside. So the first problem is that, as you can see, a couple of different signals give different aspects, or the same amount, the same range of frequencies give different signals to the the railway operator. So, for example, the L1 and the L3 are in the same range of frequencies, so we can have little problems when we are not controlling it um, as much as we need. And this is the panel that the operator receives here. It's uh, completely in Spanish because this picture is taken on open source documentation that the railway com uh, company in Spain have completely publicly available on the internet. So this is uh, a screenshot of their documentation. And this is what the train driver sees. As you can see, this um, little blue, blue dashboard has some buttons that represents the acknowledgement of the train driver that they have received this sign-up or the, the advice of these signals. So they push, I have acknowledged this signal, and I have to keep moving forward. And we get into the, what we call the dark territory because there has been several serious uh, accidents in Spain related to the control of the signals. Uh, the first one is the Huarte Araquil. It was like 30 years ago. And it was related to not having any kind of beacons or signals or systems of control on the railway and uh, the train driver saw a signal, but miscon misconfused the signal and misinterpreted what he sí. saw, and lots of people died. And then, like 10 years ago, when was the, the Galician um, accident? It was 10 years ago, right? Um, they had a huge accident in Spain too, where kind of lots of people died because um, there was a misconfiguration between other factors. There was a misconfiguration in the ASFA system, so it could be not completely avoidable, but less less uh, difficult to to fix. So we have these uh, beacons. These are the beacons that we have in the ASFA systems. And these beacons are uh, seat on the railway. And you can receive it by the capture. So go ahead. So I have to work here. <laughs> so uh, we have the beacon in that the black box, the, the wood doesn't count. Yes, it's only the black box, and inside the, this black box uh, is a, a coil and a capacitor. 
So we have a cold capacitor circuit in closed loop, no batteries, no 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 voltage here, no uh, no batteries, no no IC power. So it's a passive uh, device that is powered by the train when the train passes uh, along the the track. So uh, we have here uh, a very simple circuit with a coil and a capacitors in parallel. So uh, I'm going to explain why why this uh, uh, where this this setup uh, takes uh, sense makes sense. So. The technology behind the ASFA system is based on induction, as you can find in, the, in your kitchen or in your phone charger, uh, wireless, of course, and, and even in RFID tags and so on. But it's, the, it's a very primitive uh, kind of RFID tag. Very primitive because there is no data transmit, uh, but it's only an aspect transmit. So, where want to see that? All of this is in Spanish because it is open source. Yeah. This, uh, this, all of this is uh, publicly available if you Google that. So, uh, a, a guy uh, uh, put this on the internet that, oh, I have to, uh, to repair a ASFA tester. An ASFA tester is a device that it, uh, it will uh, be on the train part. So this this device, you put this device uh, above. above the the beacon, and this device read uh, what kind what kind of beacon is. So we have two coils here. The two rounds, uh, the two circles are two coils. One coil is for transmit to to give power. To the to the beacon, and the other one is to receive power. So, if you uh, what what about <laughs> if you use uh, a circuit with a coil and capacitor to emulate a beacon? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> we could replicate a beacon, and we could and we could uh, make a fake beacon. So, we require wire and a capacitor that's all it's enough it's enough for that so this is the i think this is the most important uh, slide here in this talk because it represents very well uh, how the setup is configured so we have the the beacon itself in the track and the beacon is, as you can see in the in the diagram, we have a coil and a capacitor. Uh, we represented a variable capacitor because you can configure it, uh, you can change the capacitance of the circuit to change the aspect. For example, if I want to to transmit a red light, we change the capacitance. Uh, this beacon is by default in red signal. is the most is, mo, is the mo, is the safest uh, symbol uh, that is red light, obviously. So, if we put a small current uh, temporarily to that to that uh, to that uh, symbol, we can change the aspect. So we only need uh, power only to change from red from red to another symbol, uh, for example, green or yellow. And the other, the, other, uh, the other setup here is in the train part. So we have uh, capture. a capture that it has two, two items. We have a 111 kilohertz generator, uh, IEC power, so we can generate a frequency of that, that kind with also a coil and a capacitor. And in the, at the same time, we, uh, the train has put together uh, another, another device that receives that, uh, that power by inductance coupling uh, that 
oh, I seen 111 kilohertz. That's okay. It's 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 working, okay. But when the train passes, uh, <laughs> when the train when the train passes through when it is <laughs> when the train passes through the the beacon, uh, an inductive coupling is produced between the first coil that it transmits and 111 kilohertz, the second coil that receives that signal, and the third coil that is, is on the tracks that uh, modify the inductance coupling to another frequency, that, uh, to the frequency that this configure uh, that beacon. It's easy to understand, yes? That's fine. Okay? <laughs> yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Easy. So <laughs> that's our desk. <laughs> uh, we have uh, the uh, transmitter part. Firstly, w to, to make the fake beacon, we need the framework like Java, JavaScript, <laughs> and so on. So Visual Studio Code. So this is our, this is our code editor. So we need uh, a framework to test the beacon uh, that the, at, that, at that point is it, that was not existing. So, firstly, we need a transmitter. So we set up a, a coil and a capacitor that uh, is suitable to transmit power at 111 kilohertz. Okay. We use a AliExpress device called Nano VNA that is a net, net vector network analyzer that you can buy uh, is is cheap so you can see the the impedance the inductance the resonance and so on so this is the receiver part uh, is the is more or less the same setup but with uh, with uh, instead of transmitting power it receives power so it's, it's fine-tuned to, uh, to capture frequencies from uh, 50 kilohertz to 111. So it's very, it's very wide range to capture uh, all the aspects of the any beacon. So we have a, a signal generator, also from AliExpress. And... This is sponsor us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And we receive that signal on the uh, on the receiver part. So we have you are, we already have the tester. So we need to make the beacon itself. So what if two people here or not here could replicate this beacon and show it to you right now? Show it. So I pay you for that. Okay, me toca a mí. El teste. ¿Ah? El teste o la No, la vale. Ah, pero no, no sé el teste. también. Well, the most important part of this tester we did is a can of morteruelo de cuenca, which is yeah. They are laughing because morteruelo de cuenca means meat in a can, okay? So is what helped us to have like this coil or set up and it works perfectly. So meat in a can may be a key factor in this in this session, okay? <laughs> and the second part is the beacon. Okay, so we could replicate the beacon uh, by following the calculus that you can do with data that is completely, I repeat, completely available on the internet in open source. Um, information so this one is the l5 as you saw one second here this one is the l5 the yellow sign and for legal reasons we cannot show you here on this stage the proof that this works but outside of the stage anyone that comes and asks will have the answer okay we don't want to go to jail, but we like to brag our, about our things. Yeah, okay.
Hugging. <laughs> so, as a computer engineer, uh, I have to make the work of the electronic engineer here. So, if any electronic engineer here can come to explain that, and we rest here. <laughs> <laughs> so. If there is any electronic engineer in the house, is, is there any electronic engineer here? Just raise your hand. Okay, we are sorry in advance. <laughs> so when you put current in a in a um, what? Um, in our um, inductive uh, inductor and uncap capacitive uh, circuit, uh, it's like a magic, you know. <laughs> it's magic. It's, indeed, it's black magic here, because uh, when you put a, a set of frequencies, so uh, the circuit behaves uh, differently uh, accordingly to the frequency that you put in that circuit. Uh, we, uh, the, the computing engineers here, we we couldn't understand this. Like uh, the the circuit has uh, behaves as a capacitive, as a virtual capacitor, as a virtual resistance, or as a virtual uh, inductor. It's okay, eh? That's, that's cool. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you, you don't get rid of virtual devices, even if you are an electronic uh, engineer. So um, The point here is to design a circuit that resonates at uh, and a specific, a very specific and very narrow set of frequencies. Uh, indeed, you need to resonate a very narrow um, um, interval of, of frequencies. So, uh, as you see, as, as Gabs explained to you, uh, we need a circuit that resonates and a certain set of frequencies to make uh, the, the train think that this is a symbol. It's a real symbol, a red light, a green light, a yellow, even a yellow and green, uh, yellow and green light that, that exists. Uh, it's, it's training stuff, don't worry. So, uh, we need that, but how, how do you do that? <laughs> we are computer engineers. <laughs> so, we need, uh, we need to wire by public photos and seeing the device in, in real world, we can get the, the dimensions of the, the beacon. We can guess that because uh, there is a public uh, documentation, but you, they, don't, they don't give you the exact details uh, to make the, the beacon, obviously. So you, you have to guess that at some point. So, Guessing the, the dimensions of the of the beacon and the shape, indeed, uh, we started to wire one turn, two turns, three turns, all day alone. So we we ask ourselves that why am I doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> I could yeah. be in the swimming pool. So, so we we end with a lot of turns and. What happens now? So we test it with the with the nano VNA and nothing works. The resonance of the circuit is very far from the target resonance. To the, so we cut uh, the the wire and we put on the nano VNA. So we start to wire another another set another round of turns, and we saw real time how the, uh, this graph moves in real time, getting closer and closer and closer to the target frequency of uh, or, or the desired symbol. So turning and turning and messing it up and what the fuck. <laughs> so we achieve one symbol. So indeed, this is not a, a real coil capacitor setup. 
but it a double inductor setup. There are two inductors put it together and taking advantage of the parasitic capacitance, we have a an, an virtual NC circuit that makes the, the same work at the real device. We know that the real device is one coil and one capacitor, but this stuff is two coils put it together and uh, taking advantage of the uh, parasitic capacitance. So, this is the, the center frequency and less frequency, the circuit behaves an, as a capacitor. The more, the more frequency is the circuit behaving as induction. So, at, this, at the very exact point, the circuit is a resistance. So, this is the, the graph that you have to see to make sure you are doing right. Yeah, in order to, to achieve. In order, in order to achieve the correct uh, resonance frequency. The yellow, the yellow line is the, is the resonance that it has to be just in the, in the middle of the, of the graph. The green, the green line is the impedance. So it has to be as low as possible at the resonant point. And the other one is the standing wave radio. That is uh, how well is the energy transferred uh, from the system to outside and, and backwards. So that is the device. It's very, as you can see, it's very complex, very expensive. No. And beautiful. <laughs> and beautiful. Because it has, uh, I think, this Amazon cardboard. <laughs> Thank you, Amazon. <laughs> Thank you, Amazon. And what you can, you have to use uh, uh, isolated copper wire. So, if you can, uh, once we have this item, we have to put glue uh, on the device. That is very important because you you uh, make with the fingers any movement, and the frequency changes. It's very, it's crazy. Crazy! You 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 take the device and no no more works. No, so <laughs> so, so you can you you have to glue of the of the wire to make to make sure that the center frequency remains at the target frequency. And the tester, the most important was the can and here the glue. <laughs> the most important thing in the tester is the can of, uh, of morteruelo of meat, uh, and here is the glue. The key, the key, the key component. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm seeing the the electronical engineering looking at us. Sorry, really. <laughs> I have stickers for you to compensate this. So, how we, how do you, how do you know that this works? Well, firstly, you have to know what to see. <laughs> it's very is 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 a key is a key factor. You have to know that I have to see things. So, in the picture of the of the left, we have uh, the default frequency uh, being received by the receiver uh, device. So we transmit 111 kilohertz. And okay, I'm working. I'm receiving the same frequency as the train transmits. That's that's a uh, a permanent uh, testing that the, the system works. So, the left one, the right one, uh, is when you when, when you uh, pass through uh, a beacon. So you you see another spike on the on the spectrum analyzer. You have another spike that represents. The, frequen the resonant frequency of the device, of the beacon. So, that works. <laughs> thank you for your sincere Thank you, thank you with this uh, sincere applause. Sincere applause. <laughs> so, why shouldn't I place my fake beacon? Well, the official documentation t already tells you 
where to put the, your device, your fake device. So that's the, the dimension you have to keep uh, a distance from the rails and a certain uh, height from the sleeper. So from the sleepers? Sleepers, traviesas, sleepers. <laughs> so the most important thing that it matches the position perfectly to uh, to make the all the setup take uh, uh, take place the induction coupling. This is not an uh, radio frequency stuff, but it's more a uh, inductive coupling. Uh, we firstly thought that it was a, a, a radio frequency problem, but it's more like an inductive coupling, as Gabriela says to you. So, what about uh, another systems all over Europe and worldwide? Well, in UK, you have the AWS system. Not powered by Amazon. Not powered by Amazon. <laughs> this is uh, indeed the Spanish system is the most sophisticated legacy system, but, uh, because they are uh, they have more symbols to transmit. The UK system only has two symbols: go and stop. That's all. So you you see a. Uh, a star in the cabin. It's called the sunflower. <laughs> sunflower. And oh, it's okay, not okay. That's all. And this is the Indusi. In, in German, it's a uh, very. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it has a name in German that we don't know how to spell. Okay, so let's call it Indusi. And let's have some fun. We don't have to offend German people. <laughs> uh, so there is also uh, that kind of systems that it is based on the same principle. So, uh, but they are not one-to-one uh, -one compatible. So you have to, you will have to make your own device adjusted to the to that kind of setups. And that is the North American uh, system that also is based on the same principle, that, but uh, they are not uh, entirely widespread on all the tracks. It's intermittent, it's an intermittent system. But it's based again at the, in the same principle uh, by induction. Uh, what about new things? Well, that's, uh, we, are, we talk about a legacy system that was invented on the, on the middle of the 20th century. So what about new system? We're talking about new uh, because it was invented in the 90s. Okay? Cool. Well, uh, we have the ATCS, uh, the European Trade Control System, that is based again um, on beacons, but they transmit uh, digital data. So we will talk about this next year, maybe. <laughs> so uh, the, the main thing here is that all the European region uh, has a very, a ver uh, very, very different systems, and <laughs> uh, they, they thought, what about a new protocol? <laughs> so we have a new protocol that covers all Europe, but it is not implemented uh, already widespread. Only in high speed trains and very crowded lines, because it's, it takes money, you know. So it combines uh, beacons called Eurobalis. I, I like more beacons. And uh, they combine that system with uh, some kind of uh, mobile communications uh, changing the protocol. It's called JC JCM R. R is, uh, means railroad. So, <laughs> okay. So, as you have seen in the whole presentation, what we have discovered is that 
by inductive coupling, we can uh, reach the most of the signaling system in Spanish, in Spain, sorry, because they don't use um, this system, ETCS, in the most of the railway um, segments. So, what we have is uh, now security problems that was in, the, in their time a really robust protocol because these kinds of protocols are not being uh, properly revised. So one of the main things that we receive when we talk about this investigation is why we are talking about this. And the reason is that we want to revise or we want companies to revise this kind of, of systems. For example, um, we can adopt this new ETCS um, system. This system started being quite less robust, but now it's like in level three, developing level three and having uh, very good results in, in terms of security, but it costs money and money is a key factor in the decision making of the politicians and authorities related to this. So one of the other measures that we can offer and we are completely uh, willing to work with authorities in that is the usage, for example, of trained drones that are being developed uh, this one is AI generated, okay, <laughs> because I didn't find the picture. Uh, Italy has now quite bigger and but yet tiny um, train drones and these train drones can be de uh, deployed through the whole railway segments to um, investigate the um, or inspect the beacons just to know if there is no anything, uh, any weird objects, for example, in the railway, or anyone has uh, covered these beacons. For, because the beacons, these kind of beacons, ASFA beacons, can be uh, just shut down by putting in the, above them a plague, a, a slice of, of uh, plum? Lead. Lead. Okay, so we are trying to to make a quite a concern and and talk with our authorities to make them in, inspect them. Another object they can use are normal drones, just surveillance and and looking at these uh, railway segments just to again know if there is any strange obje objects in the in the. Railway, railway segments, and of course, um, we can use testers and pass testers more frequently just to know everything is okay with the beacons. Actually, we don't have to create this chaos or fear, just uh, want to uh, have more intensity in the inspection rounds to or to change these uh, devices into more newer devices around the world because uh, this investigation is based on the most robust legacy system that is the ASFA but here Amtrak is using it, UK is using it, not the same but less robust systems and of course Germany, Austria, Hungary so we can work to change this or at least to revise this to keep everyone safe around the world. So, thanks everyone that helped us to get here. And of course, we are here for the uh, questions. Yes? Yes? That's right. Um, Thanks for the talk. Very educational, funny and scary, honestly. Um, when you have a signal that can display multiple aspects, how does that relate to the meat cans that are set on the track? Does it change its own resonance to uh, reflect the current aspect on the signal? Yeah, actually they do. Because uh, what differentiates one sign out through the other is the state they leave 
the the capacitor circuit and the train. So, in the the difference between these frequencies is the aspect the operator receives inside the train. Okay. Okay. Uh, what are the related risks or or threats related with the with this finding that you that you get? Mostly more beyond that the, to prevent accidentality in, in the trains. What are the, the risks? The risks? Um, well, actually, we started this investigation because uh, in Spain we are in alert, terrorist alert, four from five. So it's quite important because the most of the or the biggest accidents that have happened in, in Spain had happened with trains. Uh, actually, we have a real difficult incident that happened in um, the 11th of March that marked uh, before and after uh, on the way of that people seize the railway and the metro in, in Spain. So um, any people with the right amount of motivation and knowledge could exploit this. So we want to make a call, a wake up call before something like this happens and make people to um, invest more time and money in, in to keep the safety around Spain and of course around the world because this can happen like mostly everywhere. So thanks, this is really fascinating. I'm curious to know uh, if there are any other systems that the drivers rely on to make their decisions about how to, you know, what speed to control the trains. Is it primarily these beacons that they're using for that? Or is there any other input they're also using to make the judgment? Sorry, I, I didn't hear you anything, sure. sorry. My is there another system? Well, the, uh, the, the train driver has the, the real signals and the system is an acknowledged uh, system to make sure that the train driver has seen the right signal. So um, by default, is, there is no other resource. And the point here is that you could make a red signal device in the middle of the track with no lights. For example. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? More questions? More questions? No? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>